Look at this drone right here. We gonna catch this dude. Let's see who's hiding. We're gonna see who this gang stalker right here in the truck. I don't want to get you in this frame. I got to get this purple real quick here. Who's gang stalking? Here they here they are. He's trying to obviously get some footage of me. Oh, that was a quick one. That was super quick. That was super quick. He was waiting out there when I drove in, and all of a sudden it was a two-minute shot. That was literally like 10 seconds of footage, dude. He flew a drone right over here. See, that's my car right here. He's trying to just, all he did was try to get footage. <sighs> Bye. Snitch ass reptile. All right, sorry about that, guys. He literally, let me adjust this, was out here. That was a literally a 10 second. That was so sus <laughs> right there. All right guys, welcome back. Sorry about that. It's just when they, when they give me a free footage, I'll take it, right? So. <clears throat> That dude was in his in his Jeep, was waiting at the gate on one of the red bumpers on the side, the red curb, and then he just parked right where I parked because he probably knew I was gonna podcast or whatever. However they do it, but luckily I caught him, I got it on camera. And I kinda knew that was him. He literally flew his thing for like, his drone for like 10 seconds just to get some footage of me. You know, that's what they do though. Uh, unfortunately, look guys, if this is your first time, first off guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, Awaken to the Eternal, Kevin Meredith here. Let's get into the missing link between the, the real, the true prophets and the pastor. Why, what happens when the spiritual gift of prophecy is stopped by the physical construct of church titles and physical orientation to the status quo. Why is it that prophets you won't find to the true extent of the person, the vessel who's a prophet, more so than all the talk about the gift of prophecy? Why is it just left at that? Why is it just left at the gift of prophecy? And this is because it's a powerful witness. It takes a powerful per person and you won't find, and I'm gonna use this term, the seer. You're not gonna, they're not gonna want, you know, the, 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 the last 10% of that 90%, say you go up to 90% of your true calling, but then you you go into the congregation, the actual, the physical congregation, and, and you're held back by that 10%, whether it's unbeknownst to the crowd or not, or such church titles as deacons, pastors, you know, congregants, um, um, and, maybe, and even followers of Christ. What happens there? What's the... What is the missing 10% and why, why is this so important? And I believe because when it comes to the spiritual spillover into the physical, 
that would be the 10% that it, it would require actual physical change to the physical congregation or crowd itself to be uplifted, to, to be pulled up to do a greater work, a greater self-examination of the individual that makes up the congregation. And it's nothing against the church system. It's we must not limit ourselves to the physical or to titles solely, but that when we hit that limit, when we understand that there is a flesh accord, and as much as the, a lot of the real ones look, we are here physically but we know that the work has to be done inwardly to reach God's witness before the nations. Do we, do we, must we apply the inner examination? You know, must our witness, you know, if you are a, a one who is, who was that lost sheep, or even in, in the sense, that black sheep, I was really that black sheep in my family, you know, and I don't really use the term black in that way though, because it's such a misnomer. Um, it's like the it's like the word blacklist. It's not really a. It, it's that they've given the, the color black a negative connotation. If we were to look at the physical powers that be from the superficial or from the skin deep, we'd actually be whitelisted because because they are the ones in power. The spirit of Esau attached to the vessel of Esau, that umbrella is in the place of power. So we understand there are physical limitations. We must know who we are at all levels if we are to respond to our spiritual calling. And so, yes, this is, this is vitally important. That 10%, we must, that must be the self-examination part. And a lot of the times with the congregation, that goes missing. And so what happens is, I notice a lot of the times is, because there's a physical placement, there's a place for a pastor. The, 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 the person of prophet, without the title, can be a, 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 or come off as a very dangerous thing. And so what's talked about is the gift of spiritual prophecy, or the, the, the spiritual gift of prophecy, more so than the person of prophecy. Why so? Because it's about creating a, a religious idealism about the idea of trying to keep the, the once held experiences of the prophets alive without actually having to change in the physical, to be, to be impressed upon to make physical changes outwardly to the crowd, the individuals that make it up. And I understand why this is so. The same with the testimony of the saints, the same with the, the, the persecution and the suffering of, of Christ himself. A lot of the real ones, we know what comes with, with the calling of being born again beyond a title. And see, this is the very, that 10% ten, that ten is the, it might be the decision between staying and going, between being accepted and being outcasted, from being spiritual to being physical, from doing the inward examination as compared to the outward work, to, to disseminate the same existential, existential communication that we know is the gospel message. That might take the, you know, 90% is studying the word, 10% is applying it so that the most I can write it on your hearts and your minds, okay? Going from a carnal mindset to a spiritual mindset, going from uh, the growth of the uh, of, of spiritually of the inner man and allowing the Holy Spirit to draw one closer to the Son of God in, in Jesus Christ himself as compared to the one who, 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 who comes to name and claim in the name of Christ to, to bring upon a, a persecution or a judgment uh, because that individual of the crowd does not have the, is, is not, does not know oneself in Christ, is not begun the examination, has not begun the real trial yet, and so finds comfort, finds relief in the, in, the, in the social festivity of the outward and the acceptance of man. And so the self is kind of put on the back burner and then the one who comes in with true self, it becomes a burden to his spirit because now it becomes a spiritual discernment of the Holy Spirit God. Do you want me to stay here and stay seated? Or, or is there something, is there a greater calling that you'd have me to go 
to, to, to witness or reach those like myself in like manner who, who are going through this at, at a different level, you know, a higher placement. And so, um, you know, this is really the miscommunication of, and this is why, look, there, the talk about gifts is accepted. The talk about profits, not so much. And so the ones with the greatest testimony, the testimony made to life is the first one, the first scapegoat, the, the first one casted out. The first one who, who, who gets to know him or herself, even emotionally speaking, taking on the secondary characteristics of the Most High, uh, you have to learn to forgive yourself first. You have to learn to let go of, of, of the external validation, the relief orientation of society that it demands. A demand of, of society is not a command of God's obedience to the New Testament, to the Ten Commands of Christ, you know. And so, you know, that's the, that's the division right there. It's, let's just sing, let's just worship together. Let's just forget about your placement and let's just talk about you, about the gifts. Let's talk about who you are according to someone else's experience after that. And so we have a lot of this church system, which the reason it's, 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 it's touching so close to the apostasy is the fact that it's relying on actual experiences of characters in the Bible. The real, those who really have gone through the suffering, the persecution, the free will choice to examine themselves uh, for and against the world, for and against the, 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 the equipping of the Holy Spirit to really sit down with oneself and say, look, God, come have a seat in my life. Search my heart. Set down your throne room in my, in my heart and my life. Have a seat in my life. And so the potter's hand is truly available when the individual, by his or her free will, chooses to let the Most High do the work in his grace-oriented way. That's what it is to truly live out that which is written on the heart. Because without the self-examination, the heart can be a very ugly thing, as scriptures allude to. It does take the totality of your undivided attention and to even go beyond that, to receive this understanding, this inner standing. You know, and so, we're here now, the few that are left, the few that truly understand this. And you, and, and I've just, I'm tired of myself, I don't need to focus on those who I don't believe are truly TIs. I understand that there is a religionism and there's a phenomenological appeal to a so-called TI community. But when you're a real one, there's nothing fun about it. There's nothing um, collectively accepting about one's personal trial. And so to listen to the apologia of something that is external, like a physical church setting, which still has placement in the world, being allowed to exist on the surface of the earth in some sort of physical construct. It may to some point or may not appeal to this spiritual inner man or woman anymore to where we have the necessity to go beyond, uh, to subdue the thing of the spirit to get into fit in in the physical. That may be too burdensome. And for myself, I just, I've been away for so long that I understand, as I believe with a lot of real ones, is where we go, God leads us. So he's, by that very, by very, that very default, he's with us. Where we go, he is. You know, he's within us. Just like with all believers, okay? Understandably, the outward appeal loses its effect to, to, to keep us remaining, you know, to the crowd. But even for, even beyond very legitimate reasons is maybe God has something more for us. And the, the doctrine of it 
is not supportive of the of the growth in spirit to strike out to really put oneself in the fire by by free will choice because that's really the the only option that's the only free will option i want god's will to match my free will so that it is essentially no longer my free will but it is it is it is received back up by him to become his will for us individually you know because there's so many doctrinal statements that are thrown out there that are applied so inversely to make people believe that they can still really be a part of the culture in the name of of uh, in, in the in the name of winning souls for Christ. Look, very Pauline in, in in my understanding, but in the reality, it is Christ who saves us. It is it is it is when when the Most High sends the Holy Spirit to draw us closer to His Son. Is that the act of the Holy Spirit to do so? To essentially grow closer to Jesus Christ, Isha Mashika in the Aramaic. And so, Abba, Father, Elohim, this is the true work of his hand. And so you get to this point where, wait, they have no cause against us. Father, forgive them if they do. But that this is the greater work of the Most High for a specific group. And it's not about bragging rights and this and that. in the pastorate or pastoral sense, they do it to keep the frame of reference of a congregation going in the physical. They believe the Holy Spirit is, is, is amidst the whole of the church in the physical. We do it because of the necessity of, of the human spirit within us to grow and mature in Christ, individually speaking. To, to go from that 90% of, of, of truth and not be deceived by that 10% to not because it, it takes 100% of the truth to bring you out of those chains of bondage spiritually speaking as well and so the pro, it's like this the promise of the New Testament solely relies on the foundation of the Old Testament and so to separate the two makes both of those in, inoperable uh, the le you know the least spiritually effective in what they were both created to witness forth in terms of understanding God's order because he has a spiritual order to the to these things okay in terms of And I believe it's at the end of Revelation 12, if not the end of Revelation uh, 17. But I think it's 12, where it's, think about it like this. That election, we're going for the prize, okay, if you guys can understand that. Those who keep the commands of Christ... those who keep the commands of the Most High and have the truth of Christ in them to that and you guys know it's a it's a it's at the end there and I believe you know it's two things it's an it, it's it's covering placement of the Old Testament and placement with the New Testament and bringing them to the individual who has uh, the prophetic of those laws written on one's heart and mind along with the testimony of Jesus Christ. So one, the other cannot be done away with by just having the one. Both have to equate for the true light of reception, if you will. And it's a very hard understanding because then, then there comes church doctrine to want to separate and make everything about the new covenant when in fact we're talking about something the spiritual promises to a genetic spiritual seed line which is by God's hand will as prophesied he could never and will never leave undone 
these things must come to pass even biblically. And so to deny that for, for what the deemed real ones are seeing, we're just in a different placement of the supernatural. And it's not to come off new agey. It just is what it is when you have eyes to see. And so a lot of the times what we have are you're worried about actualizing a real a real prophet in, in, in a personal nature. And so we turn it into a religious action of the gift of prophecy. And we talk about all, everything about it, like, like, like the religion of Christ. We've created a religion about the person of Jesus Christ. But that's not the same as following him. That's not the same as being a real prophet. And so what happens is when you begin to touch that last 10% going from 90 to 100, is there, is there spiritual friction in the physical? Is, it, does the lines of demarcation become blurred and apologia of doctrine becomes to take its root? And that's how you know that you, you might be called to, to stand up out of that seat for the greater calling, responding to the greater witness. And this takes time alone. This might take time away. And this was done all the time. Christ went and he, you know, he went to get into the synagogue to give the message about who he was, about himself as the son of God, as the Messiah to Israel. Okay. Um, Luke one thirty one is the beginning aspect. But if you don't read all the way through Luke one thirty three, and no, no, I'm, I apologize, no numerical connotation to the mace, to masonry or anything. Read Luke one thirty one, one thirty two, and one thirty three, and that's the bigger picture. That's the answer to Luke one thirty one. Okay, just read it, and you'll understand exactly. But a lot of the times being inclined to the things of the Spirit doesn't give you precedence to ignore the, the, the prophetic foundational biblical structure of what God has, has written in for the sake of his own. And so this is about God's order and God's placement. And when we begin to ignore it, ignore it, we, we do ourselves, we do the individual in injustice who's actually going through uh, the suffering and the persecution. And it's, it's, look, it's not just about the blessing because a lot of that, the name and claim game here is to make every, turn everything into a blessing when it's really not. It's just a maintenance of the, of the Holy Spirit toward the congregation. That's all it is. That, that should be the blessing enough instead of going beyond that to make, you know, then the reward becomes to, it really remains in the here and now because of all this. And that's where you, you're touching a blurred line where you have one foot in the world. And so there, there, there's, a, there's an aspect of, a, of acceptance, you know. And um, that, that has to be talked about as well. You know, not everything has to be a blessing. It has to be a character builder in the spirit. It has to be an allowing the Most High, Abba Father Elohim, to construct the inner life of the inward man or woman to be drawn closer to the Son, His Son, Jesus Christ. And so, um, that's where a lot we have to begin to look at, overlook and begin to, you know, give what we doubt about the tr how traumatized we've become from the world in order that God can, we can allow God to use us to, 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 to get us into the bigger picture, to sanctify us into that. And so there is no judgment. When you are at the higher place and, and you're lifting someone from the lower place, it's about, it's constantly about the maintenance of being reconciled to the faith, the faith and, and um, analytically examining oneself to uh, a spiritual critique that most believers don't do or understand. Because when you get into the examination, it's weighty, you know? And then it's turned down. Then another external validating point through apologia might come to redirect the notion of one getting to know himself or herself in Christ 
to disperse that, to keep the, 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 the spirit from spilling over into the organization of the physical church on the ground. And this is where spiritually we might have to look at ourselves and say, am I getting something? Is there, is there something to be gained with this type of, of, of setting? You know, and I know from myself, I've never been accepted in any congregation. Um, it's because it's a spiritual thing. That's ha- that that that, you know. Ever since I, you know, I've island hopped basically from church to church and even, you know, messianic synagogue to another messianic sy- synagogue, realizing that wait, I'm a part of a, the body of Christ, who's configured in God's order, to where you're not going to find this is. You and I, if we are the true existence of, of the uh, in spirit and truth, and we and that we are the physical containers to this, in any l- spiritual yet logical sense, would you w- would it be an absolute conundrum and and a illogical form of thinking to to make you believe that every congregation in the physical makes up the bo- the totality of the body of Christ? This is this is the misinformation that we've been given to understand church in this way. That's a that's a nice physical external pattern that we that is thrown at us but our but but the testimony that is made to life is it, it, it reveals something much different that the real church the, the the church of the holy spirit is something that's inward it can only be grasped by the individuals and, and it's we are the containers to something that it's only held the the, the 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 existence of the true and living church is only held in this respect in this certain placement of the Holy Spirit to the individual, that the construct of the physical congregation could never understand. Otherwise, they would not be allowed to look left or right for acceptance by their fellow man. They would have to go inward. And that 10%, a lot of the times, when you come up to that, and there, these, then it's a different, it's a different sorting out of what the kingdom, when it's being ushered into someone's life, when, when you're being thrust into this awakening, do you understand, wait, it's not anything I did. It's, it's, it's that which God has allowed for externally, and it's that which God is doing internally through me for the sake of his glory unto his proper order of things. He has order to his things. And so don't let the Old Testament, don't let the new covenant was not here to replace the old the old covenant for God's people, the the, the overriding covenant of, 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 of the promises that the saints and the prophets desired to see, but because the new covenant had not come in, because Christ had not come yet at that time in the physical, for the seed of the, of the descendants of Jacob, did they prophesy of a time for a specific group or election of this of these containers of these vessels? that operate and are set up by the Most High in this way. You know, so you talk about church on one hand and then you talk about the promised seed on the other, but here's the, the reality is that you have the, you have, you have those who have the commands and law of the Most High coming into those who have the testimony of Jesus Christ simultaneously, almost to be the fulfillment of two places at one. And who best fits that scenario, this end time scenario? Well, we can really only point to one group, and that's the real targeted individual who is now an embodiment of, it, of the prophetic fulfillment at this point in history. And there's more of us awakening to this. And it's not to it's not to put down any 501c3 church system. No, it's not. It's a spiritual work to to bring those up from a lower place. And a lot of the times the physical indoctrination, we know because since God has lifted us up, sanctified us up, have we now been brought down? We can't be brought down. We can't be kept in that place of lower uh, spiritual qualification. Although there is a qualification there, the Lord would have us to have so much more, to abound so much more. But when you begin to touch the, it, within respect of, of, the, of the spiritual, the 10% of refining, do you start going from a horizontal understanding of kingdom versus kingdom, nation versus nation, to a real spiritual war 
a vertical war, an up, down, a down, up, you know, and I don't mean to say that as, you know, as above, so below, that's, no, it's not true. Heaven is not hell and hell is not heaven. In the literal biblical de definition of how God defines and separates the two literal places, which are real, they, they're going to be actual in, after, in and after the judgment. So, but you know what I'm talking about. There are levels to, there's a hand hanging out that car. Look at that. <laughs> Reptile hand. And then you put it back in, touch his glasses, fix your glasses, touch your face, touch your head. <laughs> That's what they do. I digress, but understanding they tried to get me off on that point and I'm not going to be stirred by that. So understanding now, wait, that's why some of the so-called church body is does it's so blessed it's so received to be so pacifist and just go with the flow understandably but when you start touching the place of spiritual growth and necessity for those who are were not meant to remain and who are allow God, allowing God the most high Abba Father Elohim to sanctify us up to to a to a the vantage point to the place of, of, of higher spiritual qualification where we were meant we weren't born to remain in, in death to the old nature we were born to be born again to be awakened to apply the free will to allow god to move us up to that that spiritual place and you and we we feel it the kingdom is first being ushered in spiritually before the physical inauguration over that of the nations and so the things we say, most around us won't understand because they just don't have that testimony. It's not one based on semantics. It's, 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 it's real as, as, as looking at this world in the 3D. That's how real it is. And see, the thing is, is it can't be denied. You know? And so, dots to connect when it's time to go from being an observer, a seer, of the nature to why you're seeing that from the placement of, of how God has situated you spiritually speaking. You know? So I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Be blessed today. Understand that there is not a division between pastor and prophet. There's a placement of understanding positionally why God puts pastors in one place and why God puts prophets in another. And where the misinformation or the delineation must be thoroughly inspected to make sure that we're not calling all teachers and all prophets false to maintain a 90% truth in our congregations, but to understand that there's a mis... And, and yes, you must be, when you are trying to spiritually discern, and when congregations or, or the pastorate begins to denounce teachers, all teachers and all prophets as false, that's because they're stuck to the 90% truth rate and really are unexamined in and of themselves, personally speaking, to understand what they're equating to in, in, in the prophet who, you know, or, or even into the congregation who's 100% knows that his or her congregation has persons who are actually prophets in the physical, more so than the name and claim of the, the spiritual gift of prophecy, which is not which is a religionism to, to, to weaken the, the physical position of the true prophet who has gone that extra 10%. And, and the pastor needs to know that, that the prophet is not here to play, uh, the real one is not here. The, the false prophet, yes, keeps to the 90% of truth. That's, and then the 10%, even 1%, if you will, a false, the falsehood makes, the, makes, the whole, make, makes their whole position a house of cards. But in the true evaluation of the true prophet, that 10% is, 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 of things is what we're truly battling against in this spiritual uh, war that's going on. And it's a very individual, it's a very personal thing. And unfortunately, if most pastors can believe that it's not, it's not a war against the physical in any means. It's just a, it's a personal positional thing that the God uses his, his, his ones for to lift up the congregation, although you're not gonna see much because of the conditioning to the 90% of congregations today and how they function. So once again, I thank you guys for listening in. Be blessed. Stay chosen. You guys already know I love you guys. Till the next one. All right, Godspeed. Take care, guys. Peace.